Good morning. It's great to be here at TEDx today. And based on the last talk, I'm going to try to keep the bar as high. So let me start with a hypothetical situation that I read in Stephen Emmett's book. Imagine tomorrow you found out that on March 31st, 2025, a giant meteor was about to hit planet Earth, and all our global leaders would immediately get to work and try to figure out how are we going to stop this thing, and if we can't stop it, how do we reduce destruction and probably save lives? Now, we can do that because we know that date. We can predict. Physics allows us to predict that exact date. What we can't predict is climate change. Climate change is something that is happening every day, and we can feel it in the air that we breathe. But when you say climate change, why do you get this reaction? <laughs> All right. So everyone knows this guy. He does this for other things as well. Let's talk about something completely different and hold the climate change debate for a while. Let's talk about simplicity. Sorry, there's a delay in the, in the presentation here. But let's talk about simplicity. Simplicity is the ultimate form of sophistication. And simple ideas are a challenge. But keeping things simple is what's effective. Now, it doesn't mean that if you discover the latest things in sliced bread is what's going to keep, what's going to equal a great idea. But simple ideas that people understand and people can buy is what causes diffusion of ideas. And those ideas spread. So let's take some simple ideas. All of us use Microsoft Windows. And I've taken a few examples just to compare how simple ideas start small and then really take on and spread. So here's a Microsoft logout window. So when you go to the logout box, you click on the option that you want, and then you click on the OK button or the Cancel button. And that's the way that Apple did it. Microsoft did it in three steps, whereas Apple just has four buttons. It's simple. And here are two other examples. Yahoo, which started off as a search engine, has a page full of advertising. You can barely find a search box. But Google did that just in one screen. It's just a search box. So if we take the simple ideas and try to figure out how do we take a simple idea to make green technology and solve the climate problem and probably stop that meteor, which is called climate change. But again, when we talk about climate change, we get this reaction. And we talk about green technology. The reason we get this is because green technology is boring. It's dull. Conventional green technology is invisible. It's put on your rooftop, and you can't see it. So imagine if this was a shopping mall, and they had solar on their rooftop. Now, you can't tell your shoppers that, come shop at my store, and then go up to my rooftop and see my green technology. And if you call people at home, you can't say, hey, look, I bought green technology, because it's dull. I mean, would you want to drink water out of that thing? It's a rainwater harvesting pit, by the way. So conventional green technology is seem dull because, because it targets the masses, and it's easy. So when you target the masses, you target the early adopters and the late majority, and it's simple to sell. But innovative technology that can start off simple, target the early adopters. the early adopters and innovators. And they, when they buy your product, they're obsessed. And then when they buy it, they go out and tell five of their friends that, hey, look, I bought green technology. And this is an example of Tesla, and this is why it spread. It's designed well, and it's different. So I've always been a technology nut, and living in San Francisco and Silicon Valley, I actually, this is the view that you'd get when you go just an hour out. The environment is nice, it's clean. And taking that, about a year and a half ago, I started a company. And the, uh, the objective of our company was to make green technology look good and look different. So we looked at three things that would shape the products that we built. The first thing that you need is the trigger. And the trigger sparks a difference in thinking. The design should draw attention 
and people should aspire to have that product. And the experience that you create should allow you to touch and feel. So examples of where that's used is Tesla. When they built that car, everyone always dreams of owning a sports car. But Tesla built an electric sports car, and that triggered the electric, re electric vehicle revolution. And today, you have 100 companies trying to build EVs. Apple put great design into their smartphone. We didn't aspire to have smartphones before Apple created the iPhone. And every button is flushed with the rest of the phone. And Uber created the experience from when you get into your cab to when you get out. You don't even need to take out your wallet. It's seamless. So if we take these three things, the trigger, the design, and the experience, we can build simple ideas and build it simply. Now, when we started off, this is all great stuff. All these companies have been icons. But how do you make all this stuff? Being a bootstrap company and starting small, you actually have to start with a simple idea. And that simple idea starts with not going out and hiring PhDs and experts and trying to raise a lot of money. We started the opposite way. We started with two co-founders, and we hired a small team, and they were first-time job seekers. And we went out, and we found, we talked to the experts, and we found consultants who we spoke to. And this was the idea. Now, I'm not going to describe it in detail now. The video is simple enough for everyone to understand. Um, So it's a canopy. The canopy can collect water during the rainy season. We put in a built-in filter within the mass, which would filter this water because you still have organic matter on your roof and in the canopy. During the dry months, it has solar modules so that you can harness this energy and put it into a battery. And that can be used for things like lighting. So where did this end up? This simple idea is what became the Ulta Chata. And just how it looks, we called it the Ulta Chata. And about a year later, we started seeing that that idea was spreading, and people believed in it. And this is a car park where we put up 30 Ulta Chatas, and that collects water. We have an inbuilt filtration system, and that triggers the change where people can see how water is filtered. At 300 square feet, it was large enough and it looked good. The design, was, uh, the design was good enough for people to create other elements around it. And we built a workstation where people could sit under. And it created spaces. The solar modules at the top were used to harness energy. And that could be used and stored for powering devices and lighting. And now it was becoming multifunctional. So starting with a simple idea, we had really transformed into much more. And the beginnings of simplicity had evolved into something that became a connected device. You can use your phone to actually track performance now. So all our sensors that we have built in can track the amount of energy you've harvested and the amount of water you've harvested. We, actually, we also have a simple bot where you can chat and figure out the performance and log service requests in case you have problems with the product. So how do we see ourselves in, as a transformational product? Let's look at an innovation matrix I've made here. Solar modules, conventional green technology, which is solar modules, fit right at the bottom. These are co your core product offerings, and they target existing markets. It may seem that innovative technology needs to have, be something completely different. Innovative stuff like the Tesla battery targets new markets. And it just and targets adjacent markets as well. And that's slightly innovative. A rooftop solar car parking is slightly innovative. And then there's disruptive products, which create new markets altogether. So I'm going to start by describing the solar tile there, started by Elon Musk, genius in green technology. Most of the stuff that he's built has always revolutionized markets. The solar tile was something that Elon Musk said that if people are putting rooftop tiles on the house, why couldn't they integrate solar modules in there? And then you got a rooftop tile, which is more efficient and more effective. 
This product at the bottom is a wind turbine, which mimics a blade of grass. So instead of a spinning turbine, you have this sleek looking item which just moves to the left and right and generates energy. So that's what disruptive products do. They create new markets. So some of the things we use when we make our products, and this is inspired by Simon Sinek's golden circle. A lot of, most companies know what they do and how they do it. If you're selling a service, you know what you're going to provide. If you're selling a product, you know what you have to deliver. But very few companies know why they do it. So our why is we create simple, thoughtful experiences that do have the power to change the world. Thank you.